All right, here we go. Hi, I'm Marianne. Um, I thought because I'm making this project, um, I would do sort of a start to finish kind of thing on it. So here's the situation. My mom asked me to make a cardigan for her for Christmas. Uh, it is currently the 5th of September. Uh, she asked me back in like May and I got started late. Uh, but I decided instead of buying the yarn and um, just knitting from the yarn, I've been starting up doing um, spinning on my drop spindle. So I thought I would try to spin all the yarn for her cardigan and then send it. And because I'm starting from scratch, I thought it might be nice to do sort of like a diary thing and talk about each step of the process. Uh, so I'm going to show you right now I am blending the Rolex that I'm going to eventually end up using. So I thought I would show you uh, what I've got here. So I'm using four different kinds of fibers to make this blend. First of all, I have this uh, merino wool in a bat, um, just sort of, you know, a loose conglomeration. This merino is uh, very soft. It's like 21 microns, something like that. And uh, it has a very short staple. So uh, I don't know if you can see that there, but this is like maybe a two inch staple, maybe three. Um, it's very short. It's got a lot of crimp. Um, very, very, very soft, very pretty. Um, it's sort of a... a, a dull green. Oh, there's a little bit of VM in there. Um, sort of a, 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 well, dull isn't the right word. I'd call it um, maybe camo green, grass green. It's got kind of a, a darker color there. Um, and then I'm also blending in same kind of wool, same source. Um, so merino, 21 micron, a lot of crimp, very short uh, staple length. Uh, th these are both from the Woolery, by the way. I love the Woolery. They're amazing. Um, but uh, so this is in a blue, just to uh, sort of add those sort of dark textures into the blue. Um, dark textures, dark color. Add that blue back into the wool because what my mom really wants, she wanted a Kelly Green cardigan. Um, and unfortunately, it was hard to find enough Kelly Green, so, um, I'm putting together these merinos, uh, to blend some stuff. The fourth, uh, type of fiber I'm using is this beautiful merino top. Uh, this is, like, Kelly Green. This is, I think it was literally labeled Kelly Green. Um, this isn't quite the color I, I wanted to really lean into or go for because I think it's my mom loves this color but I think it's a little bright for everyday wear um the staple length on this it's also about 21 microns but it's much longer this is closer to four or five uh inches um so it's a longer a longer staple uh length and it has a lot less crimp in it it's still very soft um but it is a longer a much longer staple length which has proved to be interesting i'm only using a little tiny bit of this because i didn't have very much i've got like four ounces for an entire sweater so i've been blending in about oh you know i'd say each roll leg has about call it like 20 percent this specific merino um oh actually i think i have the label in here somewhere too what does this say? It just says merino top. <laughs> um, and then the final fiber I am using is this really pretty sort of grass green Tussa silk. Um, and the silk blend is, I mean, it's silk, so the, the staple length is, you know, practically a full foot. Um, uh, I have been sort of playing with with it a little bit um but so the silk is i usually i use about 30 percent of the on here um 
and this is Tessa dyed um, sort of a grass green color and all these colors together I am using I am blending uh, so I, I got these how I'm blending it I got these hand cards at a fiber store that was going out of business because the proprietor had passed away and they were selling off pretty much everything she had uh, the stuff in the store all of her old spinning material and including her her carters I got these for I think they were 10 bucks they were really cheap uh, they're not in the greatest condition in the world um, I the cork on the edge is raveling a lot and it keeps um, keeps getting in my fiber but considering they're my first pair of hand carters and I got them for five bucks second hand I think they were a good deal um and I'm sure I'm using them wrong so I'm actually going to demonstrate how I am using and filling and loading I wonder what's the best way to does this work oh gosh you can see my mess all right what is the best way to do this there we go all right I hope that angle is not horrific so I'm going to show you how I've been loading how much I've been loading um hopefully so that at some point in the future someone can either correct me or I can look at my sad little self the first time I ever did this and be like oh you didn't know what you were doing or maybe I did know what I was doing um so I mostly the base of this fiber blend is actually the short crimp merino um but because it's so much shorter than I, I, I fill about 40 to 50 percent of the Carter with, um, with this this merino. Um, but because it is short crimp, the interesting thing about it, or not short crimp, short staple length, um, when it blends with the silk and the the long staple length merino, it uh, ends up doing sort of a tweedy feel. It's really interesting. Um, it's actually a lot more noticeable with the blue merino which I use just a touch just a touch of it to make it um, but to, to get that that darker color in to blend it so that it's not as grassy green and more of an emerald and then I use a little bit of the silk And I love, I really like working with Tessa. Um, it's so fine. I've never, I've never worked with silk before. This is my first time working with silk. This is the first time for a lot of things for me. Um, so I'm really excited about it. And then just a touch of that Kelly green. So that's the basic blend on my, on my board. Um, and I, I, I vary out the, uh, the way I put it on because my, the point here is I'm actually blending this together so that it's as much of an even blend as possible. I'm not doing like the art roll egg thing where you've got the stripes, um, because I'm working with silk and two to three inch staple merino and four inch staple merino and it's like okay I need to blend this all together so it's sort of one big thing um and like I said I am absolutely certain I'm carting this wrong you can hear the crunching um but I mean I don't know if there's a wrong if it works for you um Yeah, um, if slash when I ever make this into a real video, I'm probably going to speed up this process. Um, oh, by the way, the uh, silk, the Tessa silk and the, um, 
and the Kelly Green Merino with the longer staple length, the top, are both um, from uh, Northeast Fiber Arts Center in somewhere in Vermont. We're in Vermont. Williston, Vermont. Um, and we got the very last of their Kelly Green, which is why I only have like four ounces. Um, and trying to use it sparingly so I can get it sort of mixed through the whole sweater. That's actually my, my number one fear is that I will run out of the Kelly Green um, before I have enough yarn for the whole sweater. Uh, and that I will have to sort of make do with a blend that doesn't have the Kelly Green for part of the process. Um, which would be a real shame because that's the color my mom really wanted when I was making this for her. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have enough of that color to just do a whole sweater that is that color green. Um, That's my first real lag. This is just pass number one. Um, it's just the preliminary blend. Get everything on there, get it all together. Um, obviously it's not the world's greatest roll lag, but it doesn't have to be because I'm going to be blending this four more times. Um, I'm going to do that real quick. I will, uh, I guess, super speed the video. This will be fun. Alright, so, um, that's these three done, and I usually find that on my initial, uh, pass, I way overload the carter, um, because I don't know what I'm doing. So what I do is I make three of these, and then take these three initial row lags and end up splitting them into four. So I'm going to show you how I do that right now. So first I sort of, I mostly eyeball it, sort of half measure, okay, what's the middle, what's the end, stick it on there. The nice thing about working this way with Rolex is um, I'm not like trying to be, you know, everything all in the same direction, everything super perfect. Um, come back here, my friend. What did you just do? Where are you going? Stop rolling away from me. These are very loose Rolex. Um,
So I'm going to super speed through this again. Um, this is pass number two. Okay, so, um, I don't know how well you can see this, but so the, the, we've got them sort of starting to blend here. Here, I'll pull back so you can see them a little bit more. Um, the roll legs are starting to blend, but there's, it's still not even. See, there's a lot more blue in this one. There's a lot more silk in this. Um, so now I'm going to do pass number three and I will super speed this and see you in a second. And there's pass number four. Um, or sorry, pass number three. Uh, sometimes I would be content with three passes, but this still isn't quite as well blended as I, was, I would like it to be. Um, so I'm going to do pass number four and super speed. Uh, towards the end on the last um, roll ag, I'm going to show you some 
Oh, no, actually, on the first technique, at the, at the end of the first row lag, I'll show you some stuff that I'm doing and how I finish them. Alright, so, before I finish, I wanted to show you um, an interesting effect of the short crimp. I don't know if you can see this, um, but because the short staple length of the blue merino, um, because it's so much shorter than the silk and the other merino, um, instead of blending evenly throughout the thing, because I don't have... Um, because I have, I don't know if these are regular or coarse wool carters or whatever, but they're definitely not fine grain carters. Um, so they don't catch the merino very well. So instead of blending evenly throughout the piece, um, I get these little flecks of sort of tweedy looking blue um, on the edges. And I think that's a really neat and unintended side effect of using the tools I'm using and using the materials I'm using. Um, so I'm going to finish this one up and show you this awesome technique that, um, so I used to, before I f learned this technique, I used to just roll the roll legs like you've seen me doing, um, and that was how it, they would be done. And this resulted in very loose roll legs, especially if there was a high amount of silk in it, they were very hard to manage. Um... But a couple of YouTubers taught me some tricks with knitting needles. So I put one under under the fiber, one over the top, roll it to the edge, and then roll it up around the knitting needles. And as you can see, this results in a very compact, um, almost puny style row lag. Um, and pull out one end, pull out the other. And then I like to, I think they look cool when they're little snails, so I roll them up into little snails. I don't know if snail is the right term, but I saw um, I saw them being sold on Etsy all rolled up like this. And I was like, oh yeah, I like roll eggs that look like that. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm going to do the other three and then in super speed and then I'll finish off this video.
All right. And there we have them. Four little glow eggs. Um, hee hee. Uh, and then I'm going to put them away. Got this plastic bag, I labeled it number five because it's the fifth plastic bag full of roll eggs. And I know theoretically, I learned today actually that um, really you're not supposed to keep wool in plastic bags because it can have problems. But uh, all my wool came in plastic bags and I haven't had any problems with them yet. So. Um, so I guess that's my first ever spin and knit diary. Um, I hope that was informative for whoever ends up watching this in the future, whether it's, you know, future me or trying to remember what I was doing or, um, anyone else who might end up watching this. Uh, that's me. Uh, and... This has been a pretty long video, so I'm going to sign off. Bye!